So this is the third and, correction, the fourth and final building of the Museum of Aviation. And this is the World War II section of the Museum of Aviation. There is a lot to see in this, this hangar. So I'll be going through it. This is the P-51H Mustang. You'll see on the other side here, the walk to. It actually has the swastikas on it of its downed pilots. So this one is called Heat Wave, Captain Claude Crenshaw, and he's got 11 kills. Now what's interesting about that, if you've been paying attention to my YouTube pages or anything like that, you'll know that you only needed six kills to become an ace. So this man was an ace and then some. What I love here is the TF-33, as you can see, Pratt & Whitney JT-3D turbofan versus the engine that powered the Packard you know, V1650 Merlin. This is the one that was in the P-51 Mustang versus what we, what is more modern. They have a lot of engines on display and the crown jewel of this exhibit by far is that they have an active B-17 restoration project going on. Here we have the Cessna UC 78 Bravo, also known as the Bobcat. And I will be showing you as much of this museum as I can for this video. I really hope you like it. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe and like this video. It helps me out a lot. This is a Mark VI nuclear bomb. It's, it's pretty dang big. I mean, to give you an idea, that's pretty big. But this would have been one of the aircraft that could have carried it. I mean, I'm going to be showing you everything. Over here that I'm giving you a preview of is the Tuskegee area, where it's their homage to the Tuskegee Airmen. This is a B-29. As you can see, it's a near perfect restoration of the B-29. It looks like it might have rolled off the factory floor yesterday. They do amazing work down here at the Museum of Aviation. All right, right up here, we have the TG4 Alpha Yankee Doodle 2. It's a glider. You can see right here the specifications for it. And then right here, we have the Fairchild PT-119 Alpha, the Cornell. Now where I'm walking to, I already walked this once, so hopefully I got the order of everything correctly and you can still see the B-29 there. You can even make out the tail gunner right here. You can see where the tail gun is. Because a lot of bombers, they flew with escorts, but they needed to become armed because they had to. So this is one of the trainers for the Tuskegee Airmen. This is the Volte B-13, BT-13 Valiant. And this would have been one of their trainers. Now, if you know anything about Tuskegee Airmen, you know for a fact that they did not get the best stuff. And they often were left with, make do with what we got. Uh, really quick, it's a side note, we have right here, the Swarovski H-119 Delta Chickasaw, or Chickasaw, right here. Again, by the Russian helicopter designer. And then this is the Curtis C-46 Delta Commando. We'll be seeing a lot more of it later. Uh, there's a better view of it from below. But right here is the Tuskegee Airmen Major General Joseph A. McNeil Chapter. Became Major General after being a Tuskegee Airman in World War II. I actually have one of his flight suits. If you need to pause anywhere on the video, please do so to read. I'll try to pause everywhere so you can kind of zoom in on it and whatnot. But there's just a ton to see here. So here's the other side of the trainer. You can see they got the mechanics working on it. And it was a two-seater. Because often when you're learning how to fly, you'll go up with a, an experienced pilot, and that's how you learn. Here's the aircraft, aircraft maintenance shop. Kind of set up how they would have been set up. Now, the Tuskegee Airfield is actually outside of Tuskegee, Alabama, which if you ever get to Matchell, Air Force Base, it's about an hour east of it. So 
So this was, these are Tuskegee Airmen talking about their experience. But you, you can see they have the friend and foe charts right there. Now, Tuskegee Airmen has been expanded to include the ground service members, not just the pilots. And as you can see, there's a lot of people who could be and are now considered Tuskegee Airmen. Even down to some of the ladies who work. the aircraft they would have used in training. Now, I know I might be moving through this a little fast, and I do apologize. Uh, there's just so much to see here. It is literally packed into every corner, and it's pretty impressive. So I'm gonna try to show you as much as I can. Uh, this Tuskegee exhibit, while very good, is nothing compared to going to the Tuskegee Airmen base down near uh, Tuskegee, Alabama. So here we have another one. This is Charles Chief Anderson. Now here's one of my favorites. This is uh, Lieutenant General Benjamin O. Davis. Now what's amazing about him, not only was he a Tuskegee Airman, but his father, who is Benjamin O. Davis Sr., was the very first black general in the entire Department of Defense. Whereas Benjamin O. Davis, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, was the first black Lieutenant General in the Department of Defense and at least the Air Force. So, I mean, there's a lot here, just a lot here. And you could get lost in just this one hangar for hours on end. Because they also have another hangar, which I was then able to do a video of, but they have the Vietnam hangar and then they have their main exhibits. So moving on from there, a beautiful little model of the Mustangs, the Red Tails, the Tuskegee men eventually flew. We're going down through, past the engines. So there are other people here today. It's not just me. Although with the storm that just passed through, I got a good shot to be by myself for a little while. All right, so we're gonna move on to the deeper part of the World War II section. Can move, pick up the pace here a little bit. Here's one of the exhibits you can actually climb into. The observation helicopter, OH-58 Alpha. And this is the R4360. Pratt & Whitley Wasp Major Engine. So right there, that is the B-17 that is actively getting restored right now. It's just a thing of beauty. It was just, I, I, it's one of those aircraft that I could stare at for days and not get tired of it. Now, we are going to come back to that, but as I learned when I walked through with my pictures, there's a particular way you have to go through the 507 Parachute, Parachute Infantry Regiment and the Air Invasion of Normandy. You have to go through it this way. I went through it backwards the first time because I wasn't paying attention. I got distracted by the B-17.
So I will be showing you everything I can. This is all leading the training and everything leading up to the invasion of D-Day in England. And this gives you an idea of kind of where things stood in 1944. Now, if you've been really paying attention to my social media, you'll know that I work for the unit that was the lead bombing unit in the D-Day operations. At that time, it was the 446 Bombardment Group. They have an absolutely phenomenal history with that operation, and it's something I'm very proud of to be a part of today. You can see here, Supreme Leaders. We have Air Marshal Arthur Teddy, Deputy Supreme Commander. Well, I believe we should delay the entire operation. The weather conditions of the beach hit when we drop the parachute will be marginal at best and could make it difficult for the planes to find their drop zone. But I don't see things being much better for the bombers scheduled to hit the enemy positions near the beaches just before the troops left. It's, it's two chances. We need to wait for better weather, or at least delay, or maybe even cancel the airborne phase of the operation. Next is Dwight, General Dwight E. Dwight Eisenhower, the Supreme Commander. Thank you, gentlemen. The question is, just how long can you hang this operation out on a limb and let it hang there? I'm quite positive we must give the order. I don't like it, but there it is. I don't see how we can do anything else. Okay, let's go. And seated next to him is Field Marshal Bernard Montgomery, Commander of the Ground Forces. Hmm, I would say go. Uh, there's a chance the weather may be good over the invasion beaches and that can work to our advantage. If Jerry doesn't know about the break in the weather, he will be lulled into a false sense of security and will not be expecting us to launch an attack. I know it's a gamble, but I believe it's less of a risk than waiting for perfect conditions. Okay. I'm not going to play the rest of them, but here we have, standing left to right, General Omar Bradley, Admiral Bertram Ramsey, then we have Air Chief Marshal Tafford Lay Mallory, and finally, Lieutenant General Walter Bendel Smith. We'll come back to the airborne invasion here. This is all build up to it. And I kind of like this quote from FDR. Now we're going to walk into the airborne invasion. All right, I'm going to be quiet because it's going to trigger uh, activation.
I'm going to start looking at the rest of it. This is some air crew flight clothing. They would have been wearing to keep warm. The Sherlin flight clothing and the Type F1 electronically heated flying suit. These are the flying coffins. These were gliders. And this is what a cockpit of the glider would have looked like. Now, I know this is a long video, but it's 100% worth it. I really hope you're still watching at this point. It's pretty amazing. We're getting into an amazing section of the museum now where they have actual uniforms. I'm going to be quiet for this section because they have veterans talking about their service. Please don't ban me, YouTube, TikTok, whoever. This is a museum. This is where these symbols belong. I 
out the door. Then the next thing was a pop of my helmet, and I felt that opening shot. And then the next thing I knew I was touching down in the water. So most importantly, Now this is a replica of a memorial that I'll take, show you later. It's called The Beginning. And here's the statue, the replica of it. All right, so I was quiet for that because of the voices of the veterans I wanted you to hear. That was a little more important to me than you know, talking you through everything. <laughs> Look what we come out on to. That B-17 restoration project. I, I love this plane. It's, it's probably one of my favorite World War II planes, if not my favorite. It's just something else. And this one is being lovingly restored by the museum here. Yeah, I've spent two days walking this museum and I'm still not going to see everything probably. It's kind of amazing. There are four hangars full of exhibits. Well, three hangars, one building full of exhibits. I'm going to film the B-17 on the way out. As you can see though, it is under restoration. So we're going to film this side first here. This is the Caribou. De Havilland C-7 Alpha. You can see a lot of planes in the background there. A lot of restoration projects going on. There's a lot of aircraft out there. If I'm not mistaken, that's a Catalina way there in the back. Yeah, I believe that's a Catalina right back there. You can see the propeller and the pontoon. You know, there's a dignitary plane right there. We'll get a better look at it. Right here. You have the Thunderstreak. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a Catalina way back in the background. The Jet Star, the VIP plane I've talked about. Not an Air Force One, but it is a VIP plane for dignitaries of the United States. We have the Lockheed F-80C here. Now, often when things are on SAC display, the names you see right there for the pilots were generally pilots of this aircraft. I don't know the story behind them, but leave a comment. I'll reply if I can. This we have the Virtual CH-21B. Again, clearly it's a dignitary plane. Okay, now we're heading back out to the museum. This is the last part of the video. You can see there's the tail gun of the B-29 I showed you a little bit earlier. Come on, there we go, phone. 
We have the Bendex A9 gun turret right here. North American T28 Alpha, a Trojan. There's just something about old planes. I, I love planes in general, they're a lot of fun. But something about old World War II planes. So this is the B-17 restoration. We'll do a slow walk here. You can see this is what it looks like after restoration and before restoration. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful aircraft. I know I'm bragging about it, but I've never got to see one this close before. It's pretty amazing. If you ever get the chance, get down to Warner Robins, Georgia. This, bay, this uh, museum, of Avia uh, museum of Aviation is located adjacent to Robins Air Force Base. Well worth the trip. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you subscribe and like this video. Hit that alarm so that you see more like it. Until next time, leave you with one parting shot. I remind you, happy wandering.